Oh, wow. Another week, another different location. We're going to see how many different locations I can podcast in this season of All Stars. And specifically All Stars. <laughs> it's now been, what, two out of the last four? Something like that? The last two? I don't know. I had to go to fucking school in. for math. It doesn't matter. What's gonna happen is Logan will be right at home, but just move different locations every time we do. <laughs> right. Right. Like, imagine, I'm in could you this. imagine if I had this map for a background the entire time and just never used it because I like that one wall that I have in my mm-hmm. in my title group? <laughs> oh, well, funny. I have my vagina papaya painting behind me, and I always like to have that in, in the background for, for sure. things, but I guess we'll go with a map and uh, some leaves from a real actual plant that's like over there. Uh, But those are real. So that's fun. If you're listening to the audio version, then you have no clue what my background looks like. And I think that's also kind of fun to talk about right now. So sorry. Watch the video version if you want to see the background (laughs) I have today. But anyway... Hello, 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 and welcome to The Cup, the currently unnamed podcast, where we put the real and the tea in reality, and you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I'm Logan Murphy, say something gay. Gay. Um, I had to get a second drink because, because I was waiting for these bitches today, um, so I now have my second drink, uh, which is a protein shake. <laughs> Because that was one of the only options I had left. But it's like, um, it's munchies flavored. So it tastes like like chocolate chip cookies and pretzels and stuff. It's really good. I'm a big fan. I love that for you. What I don't love is how you have to just share all the outside information on the inside of the podcast. Like, nobody needs to know we were late today. That's not (laughs) relevant to the conversation. And here you are bringing it into the conversation. I think it's very relevant to the conversation of today's it's, schedule. So. It's not relevant to this conversation. Well, you know what? I'm not going to go on about it because you know what? The, pe- the fans don't want to know about that. They want to know about what we're talking about today. And hi, I am Lana. Relevant to the conversation. Resident, period. Your resident <laughs> evil diva. And I'm here to give the tea, spit the tea, and drink the tea because you know I love to be some tea per. And if you have some tea, you know what to do. Hit me up. I am drinking my first drink because it's my first drink of the day. Well, right now, water because hydration is important. And um, I'm not drinking it out of my cup mug as I could, but I'm not. I remembered it. Oh. oh. And you can get your cup mug or any of our cup merch at lanajuicecreations.etsy.com. That link will be in the t- description below. And if you haven't visited our Etsy shop recently, you should go and do that because we have new merch into our shop. We have t-shirts and fanny packs, so... Check that out, along with all of our other things. So, check it out. Get your cup merch. And we do ship domestically here in the United States, Mexico, and Canada. And we do ship internationally, so there are no excuses, period. And I'm David Healy, and I don't have a loose intro, but I do have a loose shirt. Yes, I do. I'm wearing my Let Loose shirt. Yes. My Lucy LaDuca shirt. Yes. My Lucy LaDuca shirt. (laughs) Not that. It's not again. You can't do it again. I can't even help it at this point. No. Stop doing it. I need to retire this shirt already. (laughs) You are muted. Not you being muted right now. (laughs) I'm muted because dogs were barking. Um. I find it very funny that you're wearing this shirt on the occasion when um, now we will mention both of our OG sound bites uh, in this episode because also mentioned in this episode, <laughs> uh, which made me very happy. Um, no soul but can also, clock, right? Yeah. No, no, no soul, soul can, can clock. clock. Um, <laughs> I, I'm go- I get to go see her next weekend. 
live, and I'm very excited about that. Um, because you get to see Henri. No, I get to see Monica Beverly Hills. Okay. Yeah, I get to see Henri. Henri. Lana, please, for the love of God. Oh, wait. David, finish your intro. I'm so sorry. And I'm drinking some Monster because I need energy. Um, I think everybody else has all the energy right now, so I'm trying to catch up. Oh, that's how we're gonna get you your energy. I guess so. Just constantly. <laughs> no. Okay, that's I. I promise that is the last time, at least for a minute. Um, <laughs> no, because Lana, please, for the love of God, when they when they said that his name was Onre, please tell me that you said Onre, the Red <laughs> Lobster, Onre. I was like, I yes. Know. I totally do. I was like, uh, it's Henri. Henri. If you've he's not checked famous. out our coverage. He's what? He's already famous from something else. He's been on TV before. <gasps> Henri. Henri. Some, uh, uh, some Netflix show about like uh, oh. him and his partner were getting some sort of makeover or something. I don't know. Oh. How That's not what I thought you banned. And I got very excited for a second. Um. Anyway, thanks for ruining the fun, David. Um, regardless, we are here. It is episode four of All Stars 9. I would say probably the best episode of the season so far. I really like this episode. I agree. I agree. I really like this episode. I was like, oh, that's cute. I like how they did it. I like that it wasn't mm. like, Everybody had their own person, and we had all these looks. It was teams. I want to talk about that further because I a hundred percent agree with you, Lana. Um, before we do that, though, make sure to subscribe if you have not already, because we're here almost all the time, giving you almost all things drag. We got a lot more drag coming soon. It's going to be more than just all stars. We also have Fros, um, which will coming be coming out kind of in tandem with this. Uh, so make sure to check that out as well. Um, you can check the description below for all of our other YouTube channels, our audio podcast links, and our membership channel links as well. So check those out too, per. But we start this episode. Uh, no one went home because no one does that on this season. Um, but uh, George has been cut off by Gottmik after she won her second lip sync. Mm -hmm. So, which I thought was smart, um, but, but yeah. not because Georges was a threat to win a challenge, but more because, hmm, who's somebody I could cut that I don't have to worry about them cutting me? Because, right, they're probably not going to win anything. <laughs> oh, well, I don't think that's necessarily the case personally, because I think there's a couple of other hypothetical challenges we've got coming up that could really, really fit Georges's um, skill set. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree with that logic for sure. Like someone that like, I know maybe won't get a win for a while at least, and maybe other people will, you know, become bigger threats and have more badges than I do with something like that. So I get that for sure. I get that for sure. Um, but then the real drama starts when we come back into the workroom the next day. They're talking about the alliances and the clicks and everybody doing everything. Clicks. Clicks. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think it's alliances. I think it's clicks. I don't think there's alliances. I think you and David are click, and me and David are click. And I think Lana, me and you are, are click. click. So. I don't think there's lines because I never promised no. any of you anything. So what does that no, have to do with the price of China? I butchered that. I mean, what does that have to do with anything, bitch? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. It has to do with anything. That whole conversation was so ridiculous. <laughs> well, and then, and then the part that that went crazy for me got me. <laughs> it's just like. Well, That's for me, hard. it's clear that Chanel and Angie have an alliance going on. And before <laughs> Mick can even explain anything, they're both like, what? <laughs> to the point where Angie's like, I have never had a conversation like that with her. And Chanel's like, 
same. <laughs> yeah, I was so confused at first, and then I did remember, like, oh, they were the ones talking about, oh, you could hypothetically, like, if we were the top two, we could give them to each other. But they were saying mm -hmm. that so pu public. I'm like, that was not a stretch. Like, that was just talking yeah. out scenarios that the top two could do. Scenarios. Absolutely. Scenarios. Yeah. It wasn't like a... Well, and then... And then I thought the people that were cheering for Nina were Plastique and Vanjie. Like, I didn't realize it was Angie and Chanel, because that's also what Mick was saying, was that during the lip sync, they were cheering for Nina, as opposed to cheering, like, very openly and only cheering for Nina instead of Mick. Which I understand that from Mick's perspective. I didn't realize that it was Angie and Chanel. And so when, the, when we got the confessional last week, when she was, like, in the middle of the lip sync confused... I was like, mm -hmm. I, I'm also confused. I don't, I don't get this. But hey, it's any kind of drama on this season. I'll take it. <laughs> can we also like just point out they were not rooting for Nina to win the lip sync. They were rooting her on in that one specific moment when she's taking something off. Like, yeah, do your thing. Yeah, if Gottmik did her thing it, right. at some point throughout the lip sync, which she didn't. I mean, Gottmik did a solid lip sync with no like tricks or anything. But if she did her thing too, I'm sure they'd be like, "Yes, go, God, make do that thing, right? Do that <laughs> thing that makes us cheer for you." <laughs> I just thought it was interesting. I thought that they were like, "Well, that got me." Was like, "Oh, they cheered for you, Nina," and I just find that suspicious. And I'm like, "Is it really suspicious, or is it just that she did something that they a lot want that they wanted to cheer for?" Like, I don't think anybody this season has been very much like, "I'm rooting on my girl, and that's it, go girl." You it just, felt like, very even, but like, yes. I, and everyone's been rooting for everybody. Exactly. So that's I'm like, I don't, I don't think it was that deep, but sure, go ahead. I guess in her mind, like if it, like I didn't. In Mick's mind, she's like, oh, no, I didn't hear Angie or Chanel, like, specifically say, go, Mick. Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. Also, can we talk about how much I love uh, this whole thing going on with Mick's look from last week and how transphobes are now, without their knowledge, correctly gendering Got Mick, which makes me very happy. Like and that whole the only discourse one. is so funny to me. Wait, wait, what? What's happening? Oh, because of the top surgery look, like uh -huh. people are going off. And then when people in like people that like watch Drag Race and obviously like know that Mick is a trans man, right? Whenever, whenever they reply being like, "Oh yeah, no, she slayed that." There are literally trans folks replying to them being like, "He, he. not she," and everyone being okay. like, "Thank you for clowning on yourself." Appreciate it. Like, <laughs> it's so entertaining to me. It is one of my favorite things that is happening currently in the world. Mm -hmm. Wow, there's so people are funny. Like, people are funny. I, I feel like, what does God Mick say? What does God Mick want to be called? Is it is, 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 she and Dragon? He and that's what I'm thinking. Which, I'm like, is, she in drag, he out of she drag. She in drag, he which, out of drag. And which, it drives yep. me crazy because I've listened to so many other podcasts where people only, keep saying he, he. And I'm like, you are you are clocking, you're just showing how like it is in your mind. You're hyper aware of got mixed yeah. transness. Yeah. Treat her like everybody else. If you're calling everybody else yeah. she Call got my she, okay, or they if they want that, or like whatever right. pronouns they the the one the I've heard that from a lot of podcasts as well, David, which I think is very interesting. The only one I know that is an exception to it is one of the podcasts I listen to because one of the co-hosts knows Mick as mostly Cade, mm -hmm. the makeup artist, as opposed mm -hmm. to Mick, the mm -hmm. drag queen. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like in those moments, she's using she's being like, oh yeah, no. Kate is doing really well as a, which still isn't great, but at least you're putting the the right name to the right pronoun in that scenario. And that I'm like, okay, cool, do whatever you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. Um, but it 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 baffles me and it's so funny. I'm just like, y'all are playing yourselves. It's yeah. very entertaining to see it. <laughs> it's, it's so, I mean, because like in any other time, like any other queen. When they're in drag, uh -huh. we're like, she, she, she. Because that's what, you, unless they say they want to be they. 
or if they're a drag king and he wants to be he, then it is, you just do what they ask you to do. But Mick has made it very clear. Even on the show, she was like, in drag, she's she. When yep. not in drag, he. Like, yep. because he's he's a trans man out of drag. But in yes. drag, it's a whole different persona. Like, it's not that difficult. And mm -hmm. people try to make things so much difficult than it, it, it really is actually is but it's just because people like you say people want to show their ignorance people want to be hyper like focused like they hyper focused on one thing and not the other for like it could reason? be we could for probably be reason? more than one for what reason but anyway yeah what a gorgeous pronoun discussion on the first day of pride <laughs> month happy pride everyone happy pride everybody and happy birthday month to me <laughs> yes <laughs> because lana's what and i know and Alan, thank, thank you. you. Thank um, you. Yeah, I found this whole thing going on. And Chanel and Angie, like, genuinely, it, it looked like they felt so blindsided by this whole interaction, just being like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, um, we get Rue walking in, looking like RuPaul. Sure. Um, I love the shoes. Go say that. Rue killed the shoes. Oh, I didn't clock the shoe. Lock the shoes. I lock the shoes. Okay. I'll go back. I'll go back. Um, but Rue asks them to pair up without knowing what the challenge is. And I've been asking for this kind of thing for partner challenges for the longest time. Like, if you're going to pick your own partner, pick your partner before you know what the challenge is. Like, I find that more entertaining. Because I, I know for a fact, a lot of these girls probably would not have picked the partner that they did. <laughs> If they then knew that it was a firefighter makeover challenge. Um, but yeah, so we have firefighters coming in. We are doing the makeover challenge, which I infamously hate. I hate it. You hate makeover But we've got challenge? a new twist on it this time. Okay. Where not only are you doing the makeover, but you are also uh, doing a pop star girl group a la all stars one so if chanel's there for a makeover and all stars this is the format we do <laughs> this is the format i'm like okay cool like <laughs> thank you um i yeah i i've said it a few times on here i don't like the makeover challenge because i feel like it is the most easily manipulated challenge for what producers want the storyline to be now do i still feel that way coming out of this episode yes <laughs> given the outcome. Um, but I like this twist on it where you also have, we're doing the full girl group. We're doing like write your own lyrics. The makeover partners get to write lyrics. Like that's cool. I like that. Yeah. I thought this was pretty interesting, especially like the writing of verses for even the, the uh, firefighters that are coming in. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a really cool aspect here. So I was like, hmm, I'm interested to see how this could go. It could be a disaster. Because that's a lot of pressure to put on mm -hmm. these people. Like, this is right. th three times the work. Because not only are they doing the makeover, they're yeah. also dancing in it. And they are perform like writing their own verses. So it's mm -hmm. like, whoa. you're And they're just firefighters. <laughs> they're just right. firefighters. Like, only one of them was gay. Spoiler, he was the best. But, like, <laughs> um, in my opinion, mm -hmm. he was the best. Um, we also have to talk about, which I forgot happened before we do the makeover stuff. Uh, Mick and Nina give out their second uh, beautiful buffet, bitch. Mm -hmm. Um, which aids part of the, like, conversation that is had at the, uh, before RuPaul comes in. Uh, but we see that... Uh, Nina decides to give her beautiful benefactors bitch uh, to Roxy Andrews and Got Mick gives her beautiful benefactors bitch uh, to Vanjie, meaning that Chanel is currently the only queen without a beautiful benefactors bitch. And I'm mad about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I am sorry. Sorry, I was turning off my noise cancellation. Oh, it was, good job. Uh, it was bothering me. Um, good. Um, it's it, it is it, it, it's like oh girl, but it's like well girl. 
<laughs> That's the yeah. quote of the century. It's like, oh, girl. But it's like, uh, yeah, well, girl. Well, girl. Well. See, I think there's two good strategies with this. I think either you want to give the badge to somebody who is not going to be a threat to win many badges. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I don't think necessarily they made great choices here with that because I would expect Roxy and Vanjie to get badges. Um, I wouldn't expect George's to get a lot of badges. So that's probably who I would be thinking of. Or I think maybe even the better strategy is to just remove the power all the way, all, like all the way from the badge and give it to somebody who is going to be a lock to get a lot of badges anyways. So if I was Nina, I would be very tempted to just give it to Gottmik just to be I like, okay. I don't think they could. I think it had to be somebody else that wasn't in the top two. Well, that's weird that they had so much discussion about giving it to each other in Untucked last week. <laughs> Yeah, I think they were trying to figure out that strategy as to whether that could happen. I think mm -hmm. that's what the conversation was about. Because I was also confused by that. Um, I did watch Untucked. We talked about it last week, how we didn't watch Untucked, Lana. I did watch Untucked, and that's the only talking point I had from it. So. Yeah, and it was weird because uh, Gamic wasn't even like really entertaining the conversation. And Nina's like, yeah. can we go off and talk together? And it didn't happen. Yeah, I don't think... Because I feel like we would have seen that happen on All Star Seven, then because they did the same thing. Unless they so, weren't thinking about it then. Who knows? But who um, knows? I didn't. I didn't think these were horrible choices. These are two people without a badge, so like that, I guess, makes sense. I understand the argument of people like giving it to someone who's not going to get a whole lot of badges. I. I mean, I don't see I don't see Vanjie as someone like Vanjie had not had a challenge win up until this episode of Drag Race, so it's like, and she even brings that up in the episode, which is how I knew that they were going to win, because uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh good, oh good, the Vanjie plot line of the fact that she still doesn't want a maxi challenge. Cool, they're going to win this week. Oh, uh, I knew earlier. I knew earlier. It was during the uh, previously on when it emphasize yeah. Roxy still being annoyed about Angeria cutting her. I'm like, okay, oh, I know exactly then, where this is going. And then couple that with the part right before the, da, like the, the, the move into the intro when Vanjie's like, I need to prove that I can get a badge all on my own. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. Vanjie's getting a badge. Great. And then the moment that her and Roxy paired up, I was like, oh, well, there we go. I still really enjoy the show, but I'm really honestly more so enjoying being able to clock what production is doing every single possible opportunity I can. It's very entertaining. <laughs> um, but yeah, so now everyone but Chanel has a badge. Mick has two. Um, we get our firefighters coming in. And then they do speed dating where the firefighters get to pick the, the person that they want to work with. I also I love this. Is. Perfect. Love it. it. I thought that was great. Is Drag Race listening? <laughs> Finally? Because I think they're listening. <laughs> I thought that was great. I was like, because why wouldn't they, the people who are actually getting the makeovers done get to decide who they want to get the makeover on them instead of, I pick you. I didn't want you. And then we always get that re that reversal. The queen is, some yeah. queen is upset because they didn't get the person that they wanted. Right. And they're like, I didn't want you. Now it's like, I pick who I want. And yeah. and then let the firefighters be like, dang, that's not who I wanted. But I think they were all happy with their choices. So I love it. It seemed like it. It's like if production for the first 15 years of the show was like, ooh, this is entertaining. Oh, let's see what this white queen does when she's stuck with a black queen and has to figure right. out makeup. Ooh, let's figure out what this skinny queen is going to do with a bigger makeover partner. That's not entertaining. That's kind of gross. You clocked the two examples that I was going to bring up, David. No. no. So, so, like, really. literally. If they want to put themselves in that position, which uh, we saw on Ray not mm -hmm. choose to be with Angeria's team, uh, right. then that's then that's amazing. And I, I yeah. love to see that. But let them be, let them make it their own choice. Right. And not right. be some creepy, like, ooh, let's 
let's see the puppet strings go and you have and struggles. It, it feels very like what 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 could you do with this queen that's this person that's totally different from I, you? It seems very icky. It's very I'm like, gonna sabotage mm -hmm. you. Right. Because now it makes the the other person feel like an other because it's making yeah. me feel like, oh, you're a somebody who I never work with. I, like, I don't right. know how to, what do I do with black people? What do I do with fat people? What do mm -hmm. I do with, you know, somebody who's not like me? I don't, it's, I, I feel like somebody's, yeah. it makes the person who you're doing that to feel like an other. And yeah. that's so gross. It's so gross and disgusting. It's like this thing, this thing about me that society has had an issue with my whole life. Right. Oh, now it gets to be somebody else's issue. Great. Love right. that. Love that. That's so gross. Oof. But I am yeah. very happy I, I, that they changed that. It seems like everyone, uh, everyone got the person that they wanted seemingly so and i clocked every decision too i, I was with my friend <laughs> well yes because as, those were the longest conversations that we saw from each other was like the most important thing but every time i was like oh they're picking that that team mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. it would be bam that team <laughs> the I hardest one was Bra uh bradley Bra bradley um, but i bradley just, <laughs> yes i just knew who bradley was getting with by default because i knew nina was getting her crush <laughs> So I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. Nina has to be with a crush, so Bradley has to pick Angeria yeah. and Chanel. And then oh, and Bradley, I was like, by the no. Way. Mm. Oh, that's who you're thirsting over mm -hmm. on this? Oh, oh, Bradley? Bradley? Oh, yes, oh Bradley. yeah. I like Bradley. I thought Bradley Lana was and I so have the cute. same taste. <laughs> and, and, I mean, I was thirsting over, like, three out of the four of them. <laughs> I was thirsting over all of them for very different reasons. I mean, it was very, but like for me, it was it was uh, was it? Uh, Nathan? Oh yeah, Nathan. Na who was who? Not Nathan. Who did um, um uh, Mick and Nina's partner? That's yeah. who I'm talking about. That's who I'm talking about too. Yeah, Mister Spectacular. Yes. <laughs> and then also Andre. I was like, oh. Oh, Andre. Yeah, Andre was cute. Yeah. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And Roxy and Angie's guy was also very was a very, cute. very attractive that daddy. Was he was a very nice looking daddy. He was a very attractive daddy. Like, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm mad at his, that. And hearing his story and his, mm -hmm. his, about his daughter and his, their, his uh, her husband, I was just like, Oh my God, I loved it. I was like, You're making me just now I'm in love with you for a whole nother reason. Now I'm just, right. like, I'm just so cute for a whole nother reason. But yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good choices and everyone's... in the firefighters. Good choices. And for once, it's people from, because like, they literally said, from this place. I was like, Oh, we went and did an actual casting call for firefighters for this. <laughs> All right. Well, you know why? Because number one, they had to find firefighters who were going to be willing to do yeah. it. Um, find a firefighter who was open right. to not to being on television, dressed in drag, and not yeah. have you know not really care what the. And then you had to find firefighters who were from places. Think, look at the places that they came from and that their firehouses were in. Atlanta, L.A., uh, Denver, Colorado, and I forgot what the other one was from. Minnesota? No, I don't think it was Minnesota. I don't remember the other one. Anyway, but they were all from places where it's diverse uh -huh. and where people are more open. And because they, will go, they can go back to their firehouses with people who will be like, oh, you did good. I love seeing you on the show. Instead of, mm, you see, they won nobody from Alabama, Missouri, uh, uh, Kentucky, <laughs> Tennessee. Like, like all of our states here. <laughs> because we live in Missouri these states. And Kentucky. <laughs> we live in these states where if they would have done it, they would have been ridiculed instead of celebrated. Oh, yeah. So. They they didn't go to those states. They went. They got them from states where people were very much more open and much more diverse and very much more willing to celebrate somebody going off and doing something like this instead of shunning them for 
being open and free and willing to do that. So I love that about it. The whole workroom stuff was so cute too, because they're like you could tell all of them were like really getting into it, and then hearing all of their stories was very nice. This season is just very pleasant. Mm -hmm. Plus the little bit of drama that we got at the start of this episode. And the only real drama of the challenge is Gottmik is like, "What do I do? I have a very masculine, very muscular man." Mm -hmm. And Nina West to work with. <laughs> what am I going to do? Oh, it was the Nina West of it all for me. She was more concerned about working with Nina than working with the muscular fireman. Oh, yeah. No, she was like, I can take care of this. Nina? I don't know. The whole, we're going to take my style and Nina's style, combine it and make a whole nother genre of baby. I don't know how we're going <laughs> to do it. But we're going and to they kind of did. They kind of did. It, was, it actually. We'll was. talk about it. Like I think the um, uh, genealogy chart was a little bit more on the Nina side, <laughs> as far as visuals just, go. As far as visuals, well, yeah, I would say like Not face. Can, yes, face and hair was mm -hmm. very got Meg. Mm -hmm. Everything else was very Nina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, all of them were all of them were lovely and wonderful, and we get a, a discussion with straight people and Andre oh. um, about the drag bands, and like I, I love that we're still having these conversations because guess what? They filmed this a year ago, and it's still an issue. Shocker! <sighs> During Pride Month. Can we, I mean, can we just not for Pride Month? That'd be nice. I mean, if we know, I don't, I feel like Pride Month is the perfect time to talk about it because if we don't talk about it during Pride Month, we, what do we talk oh. about? Oh, no, I'm saying talk about it. I'm saying, can the uh, dumb people stop for a month? <laughs> like, um, let us have this month. They're dumb for a no reason. Like, Y'all can go back to your hatred in July if you really want to. Like, I don't, I don't. Let's let's just be real. Dumb people are dumb year round. We can't have Black History Month. You can't have Pride Month. I'm sorry. That's just what it is. We 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 even got a day in the Pride Month that we want to celebrate Black and queer. And you know what they gonna do? Be dumb then too. So sorry, mm -hmm. queer people. Your your strife is your your plight is going to be riddled with dumb people. Hopefully, 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 one day soon. We'll change all that and everybody can just enjoy their month without dumb people <laughs> interfering and being dumb. But as of right now, we'll just enjoy just enjoy your month. Enjoy it. And filter out the dumb people. Like right. we don't even think about the dumb people doing our special months. Right. Speaking you know. of dumb, but in the best way, um, <laughs> Megami and Alaska posted a photo where Alaska has one of those like really, really cheap uh, poster boards from the dollar store, but it's the one with like the sparkly border. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Where it's like it's just like the the like white the white poster board, right? I'm more explaining for David. Um, because I know you know what I'm, where I'm at. Yeah. Those like white poster boards that you would do like projects on in like middle school, mm -hmm. but you could you could like you could pay the extra dollar and get one with like a fun border. Anyway, mm -hmm. the semantics of the board do not matter. Um, it's a post of Megami and Alaska where Alaska's holding up a thing that says protect queer art because we're still on season 16. Yeah. And then Megami was like, no, this Pride Month, it's not just about protecting queer art. It's about destroying straight art. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Or like So run that. to your local museum and do run what you to No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, do don't do that. That do. would make me sad. Um, Destroy uh, all the straight art. Right? <laughs> Condone cannibalism. No. <laughs> oh no. No, please don't destroy. No one died. Art. At, no one died at Stonewall. <laughs> Let's protect queer art and straight art. Let's protect art. <laughs> Can we protect art? Protect art. <laughs> With a, I a feel like that's gonna be my Halloween costume this year. It's just protect queer art. Put I honestly, on I it. 
Right. <laughs> Protect her um, on Drag Race Thailand. <laughs> yes, please. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Protect Art Aria. Thank you. <laughs> um, I didn't have anything else from the workroom stuff, personally. Yeah, no. Like, a lot of fun things happen, but I don't remember, like, exactly what happens, because I was just like, oh, I'm having such a lovely, pleasant time. Yes. They all try to duck walk, and they all fail. <laughs> like... I mean, we had we had some walk off, some strut off, some you know, some pose off. Some ear, 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 ear. It was cute. It was fun moments and likes, you know, good moments. Per- well, in that case, I guess we need to oh. and go to the runway or. With our guest judges, Brothers Osborne. <laughs> I was like, who are these people? David, has, I was going to say, neither of you have any clue who they are. Um, They're a country th- singing brother duo. I figured it once they started talking. I was like, I, well, yeah. um, I love awesome. them. I didn't realize one of them was gay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like, oh. I didn't know until the, I was watching with a friend, and he mm-hmm. he told me right away, and he didn't know which one. <laughs> He's like, "I hope the cute one is," and I'm like, "Well, which one's like which one's the cute one?" <laughs> well, for me, it's no. the straight one. Mm, for him, it was the gay one. <laughs> well, sure. For me, I'm like, um, neither one of them are exactly that cute. <laughs> well, <laughs> they fit neither. <laughs> but, I, but I have to say, I loved them, especially the straight one. I don't know which which one it which one he is. Like his name, the one in the white is the straight one. Yes, mm-hmm. the one in the white. I don't remember whether he's TJ or Ryan. I don't. I don't remember. Um, but he was giving me the closest to Joel McHale energy that we've had on Drag Race since Joel McHale in the best way. Like, I loved, I love this man just being like marveled by drag. Hissing yeah. while I'm pissing. Hissing while, while I'm pissing. He said, that was, why didn't I come up with that? <laughs> and, like, and like to do a girl group makeover with straight people and to have the forethought to book Brothers Osborne for this episode. I'm like, this is the first episode of the season where the guest judge kind of makes sense. Oh, yeah. It, it kind of. makes sense. Mm-hmm. No, it made sense because they're musicians. They're, yes. uh, even though they're country stars, they're musicians and they're songwriters. Yeah. So it was like, they understand music. They Even if, if they're not a girl group, they know music right. and they know what a group is supposed to look like. They've been around yeah. enough music and country music and country mm-hmm. girl groups and girl groups, period, to know yeah. what makes a good girl group. They're a group themselves, so they know what makes a good group, yeah. period. Like, you have to have the chemistry. So they know music. They know how to, they are songwriters, so they know songwriting. So it made sense for them to be there and to be able to judge this one because also they know men and they know these firefighters are in these, more ways than one. Right. Like, they, <laughs> their firefighters are, um, I supposed to be manly men, and even though, so he's like, you got the the, the the straight guy with the wife with the, I know men, and that's what I do. I'm a man, and then you have his brother, who is the the uh, queer brother who knows this community, and so he's like, I think this was a perfect match for them to be there, and I enjoyed having them there. They brought a really good energy to this and the fact that the straight one was more talking more and more into mm-hmm. it to me than the gay one I was like oh he's having like he's living his best life in this moment he is he has taken this moment of being on this show and just opened himself up to it was like I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna be free and I'm gonna open myself and I'm gonna be ready for it and he did it he embraced it and I loved it I mean even his outfit he came out with his rhinestones on and his Tight paint zone. I loved it. I was like, work. You, you work. They, I enjoyed thing. them being there. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. that's another thing. I was going to say, I, I think they also know fashion because yes. they showed in Untucked a compilation of the gay one and his boyfriend. And I'm like, oh, you all have like really good looks, like things I would never wear because I wear pretty basic he's, clothes. <laughs> but, he's like country gay in the best way. Mm-hmm. You know, in the yeah. best way. I loved yeah. it. Oh. I can't wait to next year. We're going to have Dixon Dallas on <laughs> Drag Race. That would be fun. <laughs> I don't know who they are, but I'm here for it. Oh, Anybody it's just a person. No. <laughs> oh, you no. don't like Dixon oh. Dallas? Absolutely not. He's straight. Huh? He's straight. No. Oh, oh yeah, baby. <gasps> my my mind think? is blown. Yeah, that's a queer baiting asshole. Oh. Yeah, we don't love him. Oh, I was about to say, wait a minute. You mean to tell me you don't want straight people on this show? <laughs> uh, no, I love I love some straight people like you. But okay, um, I get what you're saying. You you, you can be a guest it. judge. I mean, I'm also a woman, so I feel like straight women do right. really well in this space because we love drag queens. First, we just do. Work, yeah. We just do. That's why the best guest judge they've ever had, and I don't think it will ever be topped, is Leslie Jones. Oh, absolutely. Leslie Jones is the best drag race guest judge of all time, in my personal opinion. She's amazing. She's just amazing. Period. Anyway, the other judges are there. We'll talk about their looks later. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> but category is smoking hot girl groove. Ooh. Love the back. Thank you. It's mm-hmm. fire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. That's all I could come up with today because fire. Literally all you needed right there. Put out the fire. I wish one of my Eurovision gays was here. Lana, you get it. I heard it. I know it. I, I know. know the song. Yes. <laughs> Put out the fire. Anyway. First up, I don't remember the names of these groups because all of them had hoes in them, I think. <laughs> um, but this is this is the group with Vanji and Roxy and Pink Chidora. <laughs> You're not wrong. No, I can't. <laughs> 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 oh, you're not wrong. I can't see it. Wrong. I can't, I can't see it I'm glad you got a third chance. Oh my God, Pink Chidora. And she, she won! Thank you! Yes! Oh, oh, dang it, David. I could not understand. But it's okay. such a good thing. Oh, well, you all can pose yourself. Let me talk about this group and what they did in this music. Please. Piece. I really liked how they started off with the choreography, like the whole like meow of it all. And like yes. the like, I just thought their choreography was like one of my favorites of all of the groups. Um, and their verses were pretty good too. And like Roxy, I feel like she really redeemed herself finally with coming up with a verse. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought they, they probably did one of the better jobs of di- distributing time. Cause there was one team that barely gave their person any lines uh, we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. But um, overall, I thought they were very good. The only thing that I was kind of annoyed with was uh, just the visible difference in makeup color on their their person's face compared to their breastplate. It was so distracting to me. And he had his own issues. Uh, he was by far the worst performer of anybody on the stage of all, mm-hmm. of all 12 people. But I'm not holding that against Roxy and Vanji. I thought they did a very solid job with this. I, okay, so I was a fan of just seeing them come out in these in these outfits. We'll talk about the outfits later, but I feel like they were the most cohesive group out of everybody for me. I, I mean. I liked other ideas and I liked other costumes, but I feel like to me, this was the most like early 2000s Destiny Child, like very early on when they all came out and had the different variations, but the same thing like, oh, I'll have pants and I'll have a crop top and I'll have shorts and it's always, but it's always in the same fabrics and things. So this is very much early, you know, Destiny Child for me. And I liked it. Um, The breastplate thing is, 
problem. Very much a problem. Um, but I feel like this group looked like a girl group. They, they just look like the girl group. Um, I, I appreciated it. I liked it. I think the, oh, we'll talk about the looks. I, I don't want to go into that, but <laughs> I just really enjoyed and I And I agree with you. Their song and their choreography was really, really good. Really, really good. I'm glad we have some disagreement this week. Uh, this was my third favorite makeover of this week. I think it was, and I think this was a strong makeover challenge where I think three groups really, really did well and one group really didn't. Um, and mm -hmm. it may not be the group that you expect. Um, and this is, sorry, I, I want to interject, but this is like the weirdest makeover to judge too because there's yeah. so much into it that we're judging and not just how they look. Exactly. So I'm factoring in the actual makeover itself, the looks, the performance, and how the makeover partner did. I'm not oh. holding what the makeover partner did against them. I, in, in the only way that I am going to hold it against them is based on the difficulty of the choreography. And I, I do honestly think that Vanjie and Roxy had some of the harder choreography to pick up of anybody, some people kind of just did a step touch, which, hey, there's nothing wrong with that at all if your makeover person can get it. The reason I actually have Roxy and Vanji a little bit lower on my list is because I felt like the uh, Valerie, Valentine is her name. Um, I felt like Valerie wasn't able to keep up with them. And I feel like it, things should have been a little bit more balanced in that capacity. Um, and I also think the makeup that was done on Valerie is not that great. Mm -mm. I think it is two black rectangles on her face. And I think I think Roxy needed to do a bigger makeup because the makeup that she did is a very good paint. It's not translating onto this person's face. It's so cakey. I would have, I exactly. I wish they had maybe done a bit of a hybrid between both Vanjie and Roxy. Because honestly, when I look at Valerie, I just see Roxy. I don't see anything Vanjie did. Mm -hmm. And if we're judging it as a duo, those are those are the kinds of things for me that slip them a little bit lower in the overall. Mm -hmm. But I do still think they did a great job, though. Mm -hmm. They were not my they number were, one. <laughs> they were they, actually they, probably my number three team overall as well. Interesting. Okay. So I'll be. I'm curious, curious to whether we have the same. Yeah, You're I was right. gonna say. For once, are are David and I gonna agree? I don't know, but we are gonna move to the second group, the only group that doesn't have hoes in their group name. Thankfully, this is Meow Meow Mix with Plastique and Georges and Angelique. <laughs> I love this i love this it's i declared best. after this episode i'm like this is the best georgia's episode ever for me which the bar is not super high isn't it no i agree <laughs> with that for sure it's and either she, this or her talent show on season 14. okay yeah yeah that's like okay. those are the two episodes that i'm like that's really where georgia is able to do exactly what georgia does mm -hmm. and she talked about how this was the most fun she's ever had in a challenge and it really showed um i thought Honestly, I think this looks the most like an actual group. Like, they're not matchy-matchy, which is such a big, important thing on Drag Race for some reason. But they actually look like they could be like a, a maybe like a K-pop girl group in the real world. With these looks, it just goes together so well. And they really performed. I do think that this was the best performer of any of the guests. Um, and I really love their verses. Like they nailed it overall. Like it was so good. My only issue that I had though, um, I wish they had painted his face a little bit different because it kept like showing like, so like highlighted and then it was mostly one tone. So I wish, and there was color in there. It just didn't pop. And you see like the pops of color in the others, but with him, and I'm sure it comes down to the fact that they're probably not used to painting a person who has black skin. Um, so maybe that was part of the issue, but his face makeup was 
probably my second least favorite behind Pink Jodora. Um, oh, and they all kind of remind like I got a little bit of Vanity Milan from him. They all kind of reminded me of a different a queen. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah, I would have loved to see more green if you're going to do what you did on everybody else. Like we see the blue on plastic, we see the pink on George's. I would have wanted to see the green. Like I don't, I don't think the y'all don't know. Green eyeshadow looks really good on black people. It just really does. Mm -hmm. It just really does. If you just do it right, it it really does. So they could have. I really would have liked the green and around the eye, like they did with theirs i think there's just a little bit but it goes back to it but it goes back to the way that both plastique and georges do their makeup where there isn't a whole lot of color in their in their actual eyeshadow application so if plastique is just copying her face onto angelique which is what happened here Mm -hmm. um plastique doesn't use a whole lot of color i think there's a little bit of blue in hers but it's not as prominent i mean but you can see it so well that's the thing and i feel like if you can see it so well, we need to see it in Angelique. Like, and yeah. it might take a little bit more green. Like, you need to do it a little heavier. And I think that's yeah. where it was. It's a hint of green. It's just very light, like you said, because see. she doesn't have to do heavy on her because it's just going to show. But on darker skin, you have to do it a little bit heavier just to let it show. But, but, in saying all of that, this is a girl group of today. This is a girl group, very modern day, present day girl group. Like we girl groups now come out with themes. Like we're gonna do Powerpuff Girls, we're gonna do Sailor Moon, we're gonna do, you know, this, we're gonna be this this theme of, of little look, and then we'll come out with different looks, but it's the, it all matches the theme. That's very much today, very much like you said, David K-pop, very much um girl groups of modern age back in the day where I was talking about the last group, they did very much early 2000s, very 1999 girl groups where we all dress alike, but then we all, we we do the whole matchy matchy thing, but we match the fabric, but change the, the each look. Like we don't do the same look. It's not the exact same dress. Like in the sixties, it was very much matchy matchy. We all wear the same dress. We all wear the same wigs. We all have the same boas. That's what we're doing. So it's the evolution of the girl group that we're seeing on this stage. And this is the modern day girl group. They get a theme. They were Powerpuff girls and they run they ran with it. And it looks good. I really enjoyed them. I thought this was winning. For sure, hands down, I thought they were winning. I was like, this is the group that's gonna win it because they their verse was good, their look was good, their firefighter was really good. I was like, oh, they're going to win. And Georgia, sorry, girl, you ain't going to get no <laughs> badge. But you're going to win because I felt like they actually deserved the win, in my personal opinion. They were my if this was two. A- <laughs> you said they were two? You yeah. have who I think you have. As a- that really should not surprise me at all. That really should not surprise me at all. Um, no, I thought this was the best by far, no question. And I think if this was a regular all-star season, I think they would have given the win to Plastique and Georges. The only issue I had overall with this was the makeup. I just needed the makeup to be a little bit more exaggerated. It is clear that neither of them have a whole lot of experience painting on darker skin complexions. That was very obvious. I thought the makeup was good, but to what both of you said, I just needed a bit more of an exaggeration in the eye, a little bit more color, and a little bit more color. All I needed was a little bit of more green in the eyeshadow and a little bit more blush just to warm her up a little bit. That's all I needed on that makeup for it to translate perfectly. I thought the performance was great. Walking the runway was great. Without a doubt, this should have won. In my opinion, this you can tell when they weren't called the top two. You saw Plastique's face. I saw Plastique's face. The cameramen saw Plastique's face. And this is why we need people on this judging panel under the age of 40. 
And I mean no disrespect to people over the age of 40. I've got one right below me right now in this lineup, and she's gorgeous and wonderful and lovely. But to your point exactly, Lana, this is a girl group of now. And because they were not 100% matching in every single thing that they did, they did not win this challenge. And for, in my opinion, that's bullshit. And this is why I hate the makeover challenge. <laughs> I don't think I have ever accurate. Like, I don't think the person that I thought won a makeover has ever won a makeover challenge ever, ever. Really? I would really have to go look, but I, uh, it, on us internationally, it's very different, but a RuPaul judged makeover challenge. I don't think I've ever agreed with the winner. I hate this challenge. Well, surely. I love Angelique. Angelique for season 20. <laughs> Give her a couple of years. <laughs> Give her a couple of years. Oh, let's talk about Angie and Chanel and Natasha Bradley. David, please tell me this is your least favorite. Yeah. So this was uh, clearly the number four group for the judges. Yeah. Um, they This was the only group that didn't change clothes. So, yeah, it, it clearly was that way. But I don't care. I had so much fun with their performance. I was literally cracking up the entire time. They were hilarious. They were my winners. I don't care. Tell it to the wall. I love them so much. Sure, you will they be. They didn't have the best looks, but you know what? I'm judging off of what I <laughs> was most inspired by. And that was their verses because they were they were hilarious. And I thought they really did a good job with the makeup. This was absolutely some of the best makeup of any. It's a, a clear top two. The the two that we haven't talked about are the best makeup. Um, but yeah, I just thought he looked really, really good. As far as the outfits go, I, I'm really not even that bothered by them. Like it's clearly a challenge. You have to take two different people's styles and mix them together with a new person in the mix. So I thought they did okay overall, but it didn't, it didn't detract enough from me. If this was a regular makeover where it's just about the look, yeah, they would not be my top, but everything else combined was enough to bump them to my number one. I loved it. I get it. And here's the thing. I understand it because I agree with you on the point that I thought their performance was the best. I thought their verses their verses, their mm -hmm. verses was the best. I'll say that. I think their verses of Bradley and his performance. Okay, it really was pretty good, though. He tried. He tried very hard. He tried very he hard. Almost fell over at one point. He tried that. very hard, and I will give him that. I'm not exactly. gonna. And like I said, we, I'm not. I don't judge the 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 makeover people and put that on the the, the queens because mm -hmm. I think those are two separate and we can't I, I wouldn't do that me personally because they're not professional queens that's just not what they do on a regular basis so I'm not going to do that to them but he tried I think this is the most disjointed looking group but not in a way where I'm like this is horrible like I don't like nothing about it I get the color schemes of it all and I get the 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 way they put Bradley in a whole nother suit so he could be the front like he is the lead singer we are the backup singers and I that I can get that I can get down with because it's like look some some groups there is a decisive lead and everybody else are considered background and so we put them back like look at the Pussycat Dolls Nicole Scherzinger always was the lead the 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 lead. Everybody else was considered backup, ex except Melody when she would do her little part. But everybody else was considered backup. And uh, <laughs> it was just like, they just made it known, like, she's the lead, we're the backup. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is. So I wasn't deterred from the looks like the judges were. Like, I didn't hate, hate the look. I thought their verses was the best. The makeup was good. I feel like it was a little disjointed even between Angeria and Chantel with Bradley because Chan Chanel 
I call it Chantel. <laughs> Chanel. <laughs> I called it myself. I didn't need you to do it for me this time. Yeah. Chanel. I was like, are we talking about La Mastraga again? <laughs> we, we could I be. we got a break from that. We could be. But Chanel clearly did, had all the input mm -hmm. in Bradley's makeup. All of it. And Angeria just did her own makeup and that was it. And you, and you can tell. And it was like, we should have had a mix of both. Like, do, do my lip or do, and we'll do your eyes or so, something. It was just very much too, but it wasn't bad. I do, I did like their, their song better than everybody's because I remember stuff from their song. I don't remember everybody's song, but I remember their vamp. I mean, we said it at the beginning of the show, <laughs> we said at the beginning of the show about the, the, uh, the yeah, <laughs> yes, I didn't want to say it, but yes, yeah. um, so. I don't know. I think I, I don't, I agree with you, David. It wasn't horrible. Like, I'm not like, they had the worst ever and they should never perform again. I think they have parts that I liked and then parts right. that I was like, okay. Ah, uh, remember those memories of 20 minutes ago when I thought I was agreeing with David <laughs> Healy? I could not be more wrong. Um, this was my number four for the week, but I do agree with you, Lana. I think there are, there's a lot of this I really like specifically the makeup. And I mean, when you have Chanel on your team, let Chanel do the makeup. Just let Chanel do the makeup. And these are my draft babies, by the way. <laughs> I could just be like, no, they were the best. Blah, blah, blah. I, I, I just don't think that because I think at the end of the day, I think the makeup is good. I thought the performance was good. That's it. I hate every single outfit that they are wearing. And I will dig into them on look over here and I cannot wait to do so because I really cannot stand any of these. <laughs> I don't think, I think there's a clear number one good. and it's the makeover. We'll see. Tune into look over here to find out. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I thought the, I thought his spirit was really great. The makeup was good and the performance was the best performance, but I thought the makeover failed in every other aspect, honestly. <laughs> it's more fun when we disagree because yeah. <laughs> now we about to disagree again some more because last up we have uh, Nina Gottmik and Anita Blaze yes yeah, so if you've done the math you know this was my number four team of the week which I didn't expect and hey you know what these are my draft babies <laughs> so <laughs> look at us being uh, honest and critical for our draft teams um, but yeah, for me, I think I just had high expectations for this group, especially knowing, um, uh, their, their person's background as a performer, as a go-go dancer. Um, so I was just expecting a lot more than I got. Um, I just, this was just kind of like, they were all good for me. This was the one team that was just like good and not like super impressive in any way. Plus they barely gave their time, their, their guy, like he had like three lines in the song and that was it. I'm like, he doesn't get a, like a feature there were, in. There were only eight bars. I know, but compared to the other teams, he really got hardly any lyrics at all. Like and every was very at least had two bars, two. <laughs> no, he, he gave, so they did, each of each of the uh, Nina and Gottmik had two different parts where they were focused, and then he got the middle part very briefly, mm -hmm. and then they each got their own part again. Um, so it, it just I felt like he wasn't featured a lot. But what I will say is that his face is incredible. In fact, I could not believe this was the same person. I kept looking mm -hmm. at it and I'm like, if you just showed me this face, I would be like, oh, that's a woman. That is a cisgender woman who just put on a little bit too much makeup today. But like, <laughs> I cannot believe that this is that same person. Like that is a stamped face. And my friend I was watching with was like, oh, that kind of reminds me of like a better looking Brita filter. And I was like, oh, I got to see it <laughs> a little bit. But overall, I was just a little underwhelmed. Mm, I agree. I agree with you on the point that they didn't utilize him as much as I would have liked. Um, 
but I do like this look. Like it's giving me very Nina Nina Mick. Like it's very Nina Mick, and um, I love that. I think I, I really did like their makeup. I really did like the makeup on him because it looks like they all match. They match better than in a lot of the other people for me. Um, did they utilize them? No. I feel like they could have done more. But I felt like they were the only one who let him be him and tap into him. And because, like Mick said, there's no way you can hide this big guy. That You can't hide all of that. So what's the point of trying to make him be something he's not when we could just tap into who he is but soften it up a little just a little bit he can still be the muscular hard guy but he's the muscular hard guy with his big face and he's amazing you know showing off all that all, all that leg i enjoyed it i thought it was i thought it was good i wish they would have done more with him i don't feel like they had faith in him to do what he does but I thought it was okay. I wasn't that mad at it. So interestingly enough, this was my second favorite makeover. Um, mm -hmm. And the main reason for it, honestly, is I just think the actual physical makeover was maybe the best of anybody's. Okay. Like it, when thinking about what Nina and Mick were going to do, I feel like this so perfectly blends what they both do in a great way. I think the patterning on all these, on all three of the dresses are absolutely gorgeous. I love that Nina has the longer one, Anita has like the mid length one, and then Mick being, you know, the one with a little bit more of, of a uh, risque aesthetic, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. She gets the short one, and but we're still doing kind of a, a got Mick face, which you can even see in Nina's face. Mm -hmm. Nina's face is different here because she took a little bit of that more angular, um, the angularity in her, in mix makeup. She kind of translated that into hers. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. um, but, and I, I like that we went with the black hair and the makeup to kind of reference what Got Mick was doing uh, or what Got Mick does very, very well. Um, Overall, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought, you, you know, Anita could have been a little bit more utilized in the actual makeover itself and in the performance, sure. But to your point, I really feel like they utilized, um, I think they utilized all of their resources in a very, very successful way. And I thought overall it was a really good, really good showing. So yeah, we go, um, critiques happen. We're not getting negative critiques this season, apparently. I'm <laughs> mad about it. No, whatsoever. No, whatsoever. Um, and the only thing I had to talk about from Untucked this week was uh, what David already brought up with the uh, the gay brother Osborne um, and his fashion sense. Because I was like, ooh, they're fashionable. Fashionable. Much fashion. Very He's fashion. <laughs> Fashion. I went to I went to I went to Gaga. Sorry, um, it's Pride Month. This is gonna happen. I do have one other thing for Monday. Oh, good. I already thought he was cute, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bradley, mm -hmm. but when he had all of those cute balloon animals that he gave out to everybody, and um, he, was yeah. making, he was taking requests. I was like, oh my gosh, protect him. Because I just thought that was adorable. Like he, if I just saw him on the street, I would not expect him to be that person. So I just, I just really love Bradley. Love that. Boy. Love it. Oh, and they talked about it. their crushes, which Nina wouldn't fess up to hers. Well, but Georges, uh, Georges was the only one that like really said, "Oh yeah, I have a crush on Bradley." <laughs> Man, be honest, me. Uh, I sure. say work. You never know what might happen if you don't mm -hmm. say a closed mouth, don't get fed. <laughs> Very that. Very that. But George will be keeping her mouth open. Oh, yeah, obviously. 
That's what she's been doing all across the world. So, good, good for you, girl. Good for we're, you, girl. We're girl. Um, but so we get our we get our top two of the week. Mm-hmm. It's not who really anybody thought it was going to be, but no. it's Roxy and Vangie. But it's not who we thought it was going to be. It's who we figured it would be because of what production was doing. We because of the production. editing of this episode. Absolutely. And hey, at the end of the day, <laughs> am I fundamentally upset with Roxy or Vangie having a win? No. no. Am I mad that Vangie now has her first challenge win in Drag Race history? Also, no. Very happy for Vanjie. Very happy for Vanjie. Wouldn't have been my choice. Right. We would have been giving out one beautiful bit of factors badge this week. Sorry, Georges. <laughs> you did good, girl. You probably wouldn't won this lip sync. Well, maybe it's better that they didn't win the challenge because then, oh God, those two to Black Cat? I don't know. <laughs> um, I would have been did. very happy, though, if they won. Even though they oh, were not my yeah. top team, like they still absolutely killed it. They slayed it. Yeah, they but it. Um, we get a deep cut from Janet Jackson for the lip sync. We get Black Cat. It, it feels a like deep a deep cut. cut to me. Is it um, not? It's not really it a deep cut. It was a number one hit. It was a number one hit. It's on okay. number one's album. So. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I wasn't as familiar with it. I was like, oh. oh. Interesting. I was like, oh, I've I've got a decent, haven't had I've got this a, before. Right. They're getting more. I'm like, thank you for all the Janet. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's what I was excited about. Yeah. <laughs> you Did they, they Janet had Janet, Janet last. They had Janet on season 16, right? I know. I know. But the more Janet. No, that was a, the more that was exciting. A, well, that was a, going to be. Well, that was more a question because I couldn't remember. It was control. Oh, they, they did control. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it confirms the theory that Viacom has now paid for two songs per artist for their Drag Race seasons. Or because uh, there's been two Becky G songs, technically. Um, there's been two Whitney songs. So it's like we're we're confirming the theory, which makes me happy. <laughs> we already did we did we had two share songs last season. Um so I'm like, look at the artist pool from season 16's lip syncs. That's probably who we're getting on this season. We might get a Kelsey Ballerini lip sync. I don't know. We not another Megan Trainer lip sync. Probably. Anyway, Black Cat. I thought this was a great lip sync. Me too. Me too, but I did not think it was a tie. I no, also did not either. think it was a tie. And me I either. I didn't even agree. So the person I was watching with had a different winner than I did. So I'm very oh. curious if we all have the same winner. Do we all want to say it on three? Yes, but our threes won't match up. Because we well, have some delays. We can three in theory. Rocks and Oh, fighting. <laughs> Me and David Good. always agree. Always. Yeah. So I, See I, it though. I under I understand it. I understand yeah. it. Yep. And I understand it too. Like I, I don't agree, but I do understand why somebody would say Roxy. Um, mm-hmm. So for me, Roxy has such a reputation with lip syncs, especially she's, she's kind of, I don't know if Lana knew this, but she's kind of the one who started the whole wig reveal. Uh, for Drag She's Race. never, she has never lost a lip sync on Drag Race. I mean, she let us know that in this mm-hmm. episode. She sure did. So, yeah, she didn't um, want to lose now. What was interesting for me is she did have a lot of power in this song and my, my friend was like, Oh, she's really embodying Janet more than Vanjie, but she almost treated this like a park and park. Yeah. Uh, she hardly moved at all. She, she kind of backed up at one point and she had some great hairography, but you know who else did Vanjie did. She was stepping it up mm-hmm. and she was actually utilizing the stage. Um, so I really appreciated that from Vanjie. She, she was drawing, drawing my eye with her mm-hmm. and Roxy was just holding her own space there. And I really wanted her to break out. And I just kept having expectations that she was going to take it to the next level. And it never mm-hmm. quite went to the next level for mm-hmm. me. Cause she, she's done that. We She's known for taking it to the next level. Um, so for me, I was like, okay, come on, Vanessa. Come on, Vanessa. My come wife. on, Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> um, I definitely understand that for sure. For me, I think it comes down to more that I don't think this is a song in either of their wheelhouses. And so I was curious to see what they what they would both do. For me, 
the way Roxy performed this is kind of just the way Roxy performs now. Like, it is very, for lack of a better term, subdued. It's it's very minimal in movement, but maximal in expression. Like, she's not going to, she doesn't have the stunts and all of that kind of stuff. The stunts that she's done has been, like, hair reveal. Like, shaking her ass. Like, I, I don't know Roxy Andrews to be a stunt queen in the way we know it now. So for me, I actually really appreciated a bit more of a tame performance of this. With Vanessa, I feel like the performance was very good. She is a very good lip syncer. And that was made very evident here. Some of my favorite lip syncs are Vanjie's lip syncs from season 11, because I think she is phenomenal. For me, it felt a little bit more of a generic performance to this song, as opposed to where I feel like Roxy was conveying the message of the song a little bit stronger. Mm. But it wasn't that far off for me between them. Like, both of them were very good. Yeah, for me, I felt like... I don't think either one of them conveyed the actual message of the song. I don't think either one of them did that, but I felt like Vanjie performed it more with the energy of the song. Like, Vanjie gave me the energy of the song. It was more like, okay. Bah, 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 bah. And Roxy was giving me a Dale to a Janet Jackson song. And I was like, okay. I don't want you to give me I want you to give me the, because in this song, like, we know Janet. Janet Jackson is iconic for giving you energy of different energies in all of her songs. Like every song has a different energy, a different style. You're not going to see the same Janet when she's singing, I miss you much, I, I miss you much, mm -hmm. into Black Cat Donna. Like we're not going to get the same Janet. And I yeah. felt like Roxy was giving us Roxy energy in a Janet song when it wasn't the energy that matched the song. Like, if this was That's the Way Love Goes, or if this was um, even Doesn't Really Matter What the Eye You See, the eye, that song, that energy would have been perfect. Like, that, that, that would have been perfect. For Black Cat, we wanted the uh, Janet. We wanted the uh, uh, hard-hitting okay. Janet. And I felt like Banshee gave us hard hitting Vanjie like she was die. everything was crisp pop and she was give that the energy that the song but I I don't think Roxy did bad I just don't think it was the it matched the energy that needed to go with that song that's why I think Vanjie more that is me fair another week disagreeing on lip syncs shocker <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do what but we it do. doesn't matter this week because both of them won okay mm, sure all right. <laughs> okay. Um, and so they have to collectively decide who to cut off. Nobody's surprised. Angie got cut. Yeah. And really, I think I, I did not want to see this happen because she's absolutely one of my favorites this season. Um, but I think she was the only logical choice because if you think about it, okay, obviously got mixed off the table because she just gave Angie a right. batch can't do her. We got to take Nina off the table. She just gave yep. one to Roxy. Yep. Plastique, best friends with Roxy. Off the yep. table. Chanel, no badges? Off the table. Okay, we, we're down to two people. Georges and Angeria. Who am I more threatened by? Right. I'm sorry, Angeria. It had to be it, her. It had to be her. And I point. hate no, it, it for her. No, it didn't. Who, but... who, you think it should have been Georges again? No, I think it should, probably should have been Chanel. Chanel. Because I feel like that's the person I feel like that is the person that they are the most neutral on. And I feel like there mm -hmm. are also challenges coming up. Like I think Chanel has a great shot to win next episode. And get a badge. Her one badge? I don't know. I wouldn't be threatened. And there I mean, are four other girls with one badge. But you don't want them getting two. I mean, I give both of your points. I feel like, sure, Chanel would have been a choice because we're both, we don't, 
want to ruffle any feathers. Nobody really cares, even though she ain't got no badges, though. But she could win this next challenge, which would give her her first badge. But do I want to give her her first badge, or do she get no badges? She just get this competition and have no badges in the end. Sorry, girl. That might be a, a way to go. Or you could just not give it to somebody who you like. I feel like this was very much tit for tat for a Roxy. And I don't think like her mind was made up as soon as she said they said she won. Like she knew exactly what she was doing. She was like, and Benji was like, I don't really care. You can be whoever you want to be. She because it, it didn't matter to Benji. Why would it matter to her at that point? But Child, I don't. I think it could have went either way, but I felt like her giving it to Rock to Angie was kind of just like, okay, you got your revenge. Are we just gonna keep playing this tip for tat game back and forth all season? Or yeah, that's what it feels like to me. <laughs> that's what it feels like. I mean, it's it's now they're even. You know, uh, can we talk about that preview though? <laughs> just briefly, please. <laughs> Because uh, we see that Angier is not happy in the preview. And then we see Roxy being like, girl, this was not just my decision. Right. And I'm like, Roxy, own it. Just own it. Don't try to right. shift the blame on Vanji too. You know, right. That's why I'm annoyed with Roxy here. That's why I'm annoyed with Roxy here. Because I'm like, you both could have blocked Mick. And Mick would have understood. Also. Like... Mm-hmm. I don't think blocking Mick would have caused any sort of repercussion on either Roxy or Vanjie for that matter. It would have been kind of a bitch move for Mick to give Vanjie a badge and then Vanjie to block her. But like, that's the game. Right. I just feel like we're going to end up going through this season. And I just, I don't like the clicks personally, but I feel like we're going to end up going through a season where like not everyone gets blocked because they're just going to keep coming after the same people over and over again. I'm like that's boring. True. But boring. I am curious though. Uh so we're a third of the way done with the season already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. That's crazy. And I'm curious who you all would like to see in the top three. Because I think I have I think I'm starting to get a clear top three already. I am. And it's not who I expected <laughs> going into the season. I guess I'll I'll start off. Um, I've been so impressed with Mick this season. Um, She's absolutely in my top three. I think she's killing it. Uh, This is probably my least favorite week from her, and it still wasn't bad. Um, So I would have her in there. Another person that I was like, "Mm, I I don't care about her that much, but Angeria. It is amazing how much more I love her so far this season when she really wasn't much of a factor for me in her initial season. And then I've been trying to figure out who is my third. And I think this episode really solidified. She brings the looks, but she also brings so much more plastique is in my top three as well. I would love to see them as the top three this season. I wouldn't mind that. Honestly, I wouldn't mind. Um, I think I agree with you. I think those are my top three as well. I think Nigeria, Plastic, and and um, Mick have really just done it for me. I really thinking. I'm thinking. I really do. Those are the three I look forward to every week. Like I said, I was very obsessed with Plastic preseason, so I was like, I don't know this girl, but I love this girl. And then Angie got me week one premiere night. I was like, oh, okay, I love this girl. Love this girl. And then Mick got me last week. So I was just like, I think those are three. I might have to agree with you. As boring as it might be. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry. I'm gonna disagree. So I Okay, good. (laughs) There will be a little bit of there will be a little bit of difference. For me, I think the front runner by far, based on the fact that she's been blocked twice. I think it's Angeria. I think the moments that she's not blocked, she's going to be successful because she is a, she is probably the most well-rounded person on this cast. Now, if I think about what else is potentially coming this season, I think Mick is a lock-in. I think Mick is going to be very, very safely there. I think with the comedy and the fashion challenges that we potentially have coming up, because there's got to be a scripted acting challenge there's probably going to be an improv challenge. And those are both things that Got McDoes very well in. 
and did previously. So I think for me, I think it's going to be Angie, Mick. And I think based on what's happening with, what happened with this episode, I'm actually going to put Roxy in my top three because again of that versatility factor i think there is a lot of possibility coming up based on previous all-stars challenges i think there's a bit more of a possibility of roxy getting more badges as opposed to someone like plastique Mm -hmm. i think plastique is going to do very well but plastique has a very specific skill set as we saw last week anything involving comedy you could pretty much write off Plastique from getting a badge. True. I can't say that for Angie, Mick, or Roxy. True. But to be fair, I was asking, like, who's your personal top three so far? So, like, that I can also be my personal okay. top three. Because that I, would also I, be my personal been, top three. I've been disappointed with Roxy. Like, I was expecting a lot. I was expecting her to come out slaying it. And I think she's been kind of coasting. Uh, like, sh- she wouldn't have been my top this week. She wouldn't have been my top any week. Uh, so I'm just waiting, and I know it's going to come at some point, but I'm just waiting for her to kill it. I just don't think yeah. it's happened yet. Mm. But Fair hey, I'm glad we didn't all agree. <laughs> right, literally. Um, David, do we have a update on the we, I don't necessarily want to know it personally. But. <laughs> um, so uh, we do have a draft update, and I am pulling it up as we speak. So right now... Uh, in last place, we have Brooke. Oh, it's not. And, I thought it was me. Um, and Logan. Yeah. Both tied with 22 wow. points. But you're not too far behind. Um, in second place is Camorian with 24 and a half points. So I ended up giving half points uh, for the stars or, or the badges that were given. Okay. Uh, just that because I thought that made the most sense. And then um, in number one with 26 points is me. Wow. It's not bad. Oh, I mean, I thought it was I thought it was gonna be further away, but y'all yeah. are closer than I thought. I did too. Pretty even teams. Like if mm-hmm. if we think about it, so my team is Nina and Gottmik. Um, and then uh the team Camorian's team is uh Vanji and Plastique. Yeah, and then Logan has Angeria and Chanel and uh Brooke has uh georges and roxy so pretty she nailed it when a goddamn challenge <laughs> like that's what it is honestly what if this week it was if, if i was the judge <laughs> <sighs> well i would have gotten i would have gotten a lot of points this week if you were the judge david yeah so <laughs> but that is that we're gonna get out of here make sure to check out our episode of look over here as well where we will talk uh pretty briefly about the looks because there's not a whole lot to talk about with them um but yes we will be back next week with our recap for episode five of rupaul's drag race all stars season nine thank you for joining make sure to subscribe like and share on your way out check out the description below for all of our audio podcast links our youtube channels and our membership channel links um as well as where you can find our social media at the cup pod on twitter instagram and tiktok um you can find the links to follow all three of us as well and you could go get your merch including my not limited to cup mug down there as well and with that being said we're gonna get out of here Cheers. 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 That was rude. (laughs) (laughs) Ah. Ah. I'm still doing it. Oh no.